الحمد وصلات وسلام قال رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أوف بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الدين إن الله الإسلام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب الشهر الفدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني يفكه قولي Respect the chairman, my respected elders, and my dear brothers and sisters. I welcome all of you with Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. The topic of today's evening's talk is in a form of a question. Why the West is coming to Islam? And if you have to give the reply in just one sentence, the answer is the West is coming to Islam because Islam has the solutions to the problems of the West. The Western world, mainly the society, it caters to certain needs of the body. It caters to the physical needs of the body. There are several religions, most of them, which only cater to the spiritual aspect, that's the soul. But Alhamdulillah, Islam is a religion which has got a dual role. It caters to the physical aspect of the body as well as the spiritual need of the soul. It has a dual role. It caters to the body as well as the soul. Islam comes from the root word salam, which means peace. It also means submitting your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to Almighty God. In short, Islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to Almighty God. The glory of Quran is the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which was revealed to the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The glory of Quran is the most positive book in the world. It's a proclamation to humanity. It's a fountain of mercy and wisdom. It's a warning to the heedless, a guide to the erring, an assurance to those in doubt, a solace to the suffering, and a hope to those in despair. Let us analyze today the reasons why the West is coming to Islam. One of the important reasons is that the Western world is open-minded. Their minds aren't closed, they're broad-minded, and neither are the conservatives like many other parts of the world. And that's the reason that I say when people ask me the question that I keep on traveling by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to different parts of the world, how is the response to the talks, etc. So I tell them that our job is to deliver the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is He who gives hidayah. Allah says in Surah Rashiya, chapter 88, verse number 21, for you have to admonish. You are not a manager of a fair or people's team. But I tell them that there is a lot of difference between the Western world and the Eastern world. And if suppose, I tell them, that if one non-Muslim in the world, especially the country where I come from, that is India, if one non-Muslim in India accepts Islam, it is equivalent to 50 non-Muslims accepting Islam in the Western world. That doesn't mean one Indian is so superior, it is 50 times more superior than the West, no? It's not that. What I'm trying to tell them is that the society in the East, especially India, it is conservative. It's narrow-minded. Even if a person likes the teachings of Islam, it's very difficult for him to accept Islam. Because he has several problems. Even if he likes Islam, he is afraid of the society. The society may boycott him. He may have economic problems. There may be danger to his life. He may have social problems. 
Therefore, even if a person likes Islam in India, it is very difficult for him to accept Islam because the society is conservative and the people, they are narrow-minded as compared to the Westerners. But that is no excuse for the non-Muslims in India for not to accept Islam. We will be held responsible for that. As compared to the Westerners, I keep on giving talks, Alhamdulillah, in Middle East and various parts of the world. Some Westerners keep on following me and after a couple of lectures, they just even after one lecture, Alhamdulillah, they like Islam so much that they accept at the end of the talk. Which is not the case in Bombay, I have to sog out, you know, and have to really for months and years together. Finally, it's not because of the efforts of the Dai that the person accepts Islam, it's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them hidayah and gives them courage. So first reason I would say, the Westerners are more broad-minded because in the same family, the father can be a Christian, but he would not mind if the children, they accept Islam. You know, yet they can live under the same roof, which is not the case in India. Hardly will you find that the father belongs to a different religion and the children belong to a different religion. You will not find such a family. Therefore, I say that the Westerners are more broad-minded and they are not conservative as far as religion is concerned. The other important reason is, to the Western world, 